Hello, my lovely artist friends. Today, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite artists. Her name, Yayo Kasama. She was born in 1929, meaning that she is over 95 years old this year. And she's still working, which is an incredible achievement. She's from Japan, um, and her main art style is considered to be pop art, minimalism, um, and contemporary. Uh, but there, she also has elements of surrealism in there as well. Kusama is most famous for her use of polka dots in her works. So like our previous video on Roy Lichtenstein, who... Um, used the Ben Day dots to create his artworks, the shading, the colour mixing, all that type of thing. Kusama uses polka dots as a way of bringing herself into her art. This is because as a child, Kusama didn't have the best of lives and she would often hallucinate polka dots that covered her world. So if she looked at a jug, she would see polka dots, not just on the jug, but on the table and the walls behind. So this, conti this continued to be a major part of her artworks as she considered this a form of self-obliteration, where she would become one with the art and become entwined in the world and not feel so disconnected. She's often, she's often said that painting and drawing the polka dots would help her to think about something else while she's feeling anxious or worried. In the 1970s, after having a career as an artist both in Japan and New York, she moved back to Japan and felt that the best and safest place for her to live and to work was a mental institution. So she checked herself into a mental hospital and she's lived there ever since with a studio just a block away from where she lives. She works with some assistants um, to help her, especially as she's getting older and she, she will likely to live there until the day of her death. Some of Kusama's most famous art artworks are the pumpkin and her infinity rooms and her self-obliteration rooms. These are items and rooms that make you feel like you're walking into an entirely different universe. So her infinity rooms and her obliteration rooms I like nothing else in this world. Her obliteration room start off as a perfectly stark white room with furniture in white, tables in white, accessories in white that are then covered in polka dot stickers by those who enter in and those who, are, who walk through this work. Therefore, she's also inviting you to come and be part of the artwork which I think is really, really, really cool because we can participate in making it. And in fact, every so often, our art gallery here in Brisbane holds one of these rooms. Her other, her other rooms are her infinity rooms. They're rooms filled with mirrors, LEDs, and they make you feel like you're walking into a galaxy. They're stunning. Whilst I've never been able to visit one in person, it is definitely on my bucket list. Another quote that I love from Kusanma is, Our Earth is only one polka dot among a million stars in the cosmos. Polka dots are a way to infinity. When we obliterate nature and our bodies with polka dots, we become part of the unity of our environment. Which is exactly what you... you Yayo Kusama's work makes me feel like. And this is why she's one of my favourite, favourite artists. And we're going to do today a painting of a person 
not necessarily you, not necessarily anybody else, but we're going to um, have a go at doing one of her self-portraits. So you can style this to be either exactly as the picture that you've received this week in your pack, or you can change it up and make it your own. Make it your own self-portrait. Make it a portrait of a family member. It's totally up to you. So come on, let's get into it and let's go get painting. All right, let's get ready for this week. We've got a size six flat brush, a size zero, a size two flat brush, sorry, a round zero brush, a permanent black marker, a pencil, and an eraser. We've also got our fresh water, our cloth, and our paints. So for this one, uh, you can either stick with the colors that, just the primary colors, or you can mix them up. We're going to be mostly making them into um, tints of these colors, just to keep it bright and vibrant. But I've also put black out just in case we want to make some shades. So shades and tints. Shades is when you add black to a color, and a tint is when you add white. Now we're going to start off by drawing Kusama's head. She's done this in the top half of her page. So that's the other thing. You can do this on canvas, you can do this on um, paper, whatever you've got handy, use that. Otherwise you can buy these kits at over at my website and I'll put a link to that in the description. So we've got our head, we're going to do a nice a nice long neck to which we are also going to do some shoulders. You'd also know if you're looking at the at the picture, which I will pop up in the corner, that she's wear it looks like she's wearing a turtleneck. So we're gonna just do a a line with a couple of small C's going around to the back of the neck, and that's going to be her shirt. Next up, we're going to put some lips. Two small nose nostrils. And two eyes. Whoops! Mine aren't quite are nothing I like, so I'm just going to erase those out. And I'm going to try again. I didn't press too hard uh, when I erased that. I'm going to do one eye, two eyes, join them down the bottom, pop a pupil in the center. We can always come back and fix this up. Then we're going to give some eyebrows. She has a very blunt fringe, so we're going to draw that in with some hair coming down the side, not all the way down, and then it juts off, and then all the way to the shoulders, and we're going to do that on the other side. So this is very reminiscent of her long-haired bob that she often wears her hair in, and then we're just going to put the rest of the hair in. This is where we're now going to pick up our permanent marker and we're going to draw those lines in. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to do her chin. And we're going to colour those nostrils.
and then we're going to come back in with our block colours, so using our number 6 paintbrush we've got purple in the background so one part blue, one part, two parts red and I'm going to cover my background in this purple colour So again, that's two parts red, one part blue, wash our brush. For her hair we're going to do black. So this is one of these paintings that go against all the rules that we've taught you or that you might have learnt where you do black last. The reason being that we are going to put polka dots on top of this. So just like our Frida Kahlo painting we're doing a colour block first. So you might be wondering why I'm not doing these parts of her hair. That's because we're going to do that a different colour. Because like me, Kusama loves to wear really cool funky wigs. And in fact for the last number of years she's been wearing a bright red. Bright red, like fire truck red. Um wig that just comes to just above her shoulders and it's so cool. So next we're going to go into the just under here and for that I'm just going to take our red.
while we're working with red, we need to take one part red and two parts yellow. And I'm going to turn that into an orange. And we're going to put that on her face and her neck. Back. I'll paint some white over those eyes. Now my paint's a bit runny. I'm not sure what's happening with the paint today. I know there was a bit of water in it, but it might have been sitting on the shelf too long as well. So they've separated a bit. I might have to go shake them up. Alright, next colour we're going to do is down here which is one part blue, two parts yellow, and we're going to make a nice vivid green. Just like that. And we're going to put that on a shirt. Alright, there we go. That's the colour blocking of that done. Now what we're going to do is we are just going to let that dry. While you're dry, letting that dry, make sure to wash off your brush, give it a wipe down. What we're going to do is we're going to go find some cotton buds, um, ends of a pencil, some different size um, implements that can create different size dots. So I'm going to go grab those and I'll see you back here in a minute. Alright, so this is what I've chosen. I've chosen some cotton buds, the end of a paintbrush, so this is the end of my size 2 flat brush, and just a pencil that's got a round shape to it. So we're still a bit wet, but I think we can start working. As long as we avoid the face for now, we're going to start working on the background, um, the shirt, and I think we might be able to do in here. So under the hair. So for this, we've got our dark colours down. So what I want to do is I want to mix up some lighter colours. So I'm going to use what's left of the purple. I'm going to bring in some white. Some 
So I want it to be the same purple as what we were using before, but I just want a different tint of it. Then I'm going to grab the end of my pencil because it's the largest thing I've got, load it up, and I'm just going to start, in fact I might start from the bottom here, I'm just going to start putting, going around the figure in dots. And as you keep going, you're going to add in different rows. So you're just going to keep going along like that. If you have any gaps, you can then go in with something smaller and add those in and add those in as well. So I'm just going to speed this up and I'll see you back once we've finished the background. There we go, how'd you go? I bet yours is looking super cool as well. We're going to now do, um, I think we'll move on to the blue. The blue dots. So what we're going to do is mix up a lighter blue. Also going to mix up a light green and that's because she's given herself a two-toned a two-toned um, jumper blue and green it was we're going to make some horizontal vertical stripes so we're going to add using with our bigger implement we're going to do a row of large dots leaving about two fingers and we're going to do another row of large dots if you like me you might have to make up colors more than once because I like to work on the theory that less is more because I don't like to waste paint so I prefer to work on less rather than and then come back and make more if I need to so another again two finger spaces and if you want to you can go you can do that right down so you know exactly where your wing spaces are going to be. I'm going to make up some more green. working on those dots. I'm trying to keep them in a nice straight line. I'm 
I'm just using my pinky finger, slightly pressing it, slightly touching it to a dry part of the canvas to keep my hand steady. Once we've done that, we're going to move over to our blue. And what we're going to do is the same thing, but this time in the middle of those blues, of the green. And there'll probably be just one on each end. So again, finger lightly on the on the on the painting trying not to smudge anything and we're just going to add our dots. And try not to put your finger in it like I did. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the green, make some more up, and I'm going to put smaller dots on either side of my large green dots. Don't worry if it's not quite the same colour if you're making it up again like me. As long as it's lighter than the background, I'm sure it won't matter too much. So I'm going to grab my cotton bud and we're going to go and do dots on the outside, giving as nice and close as you can to the bigger dots. without being on top of them. Mommy! Then we're going to do the same for the blue. to use the pointer of my pencil and I'm just going to alternate with the greens and blues just to fill up on her hair because that black is nice and dry and this time I'm going to go in with a red purple or a maroon so we're going to do just where we've kind of mixed this purple before we're going to go three parts red one part blue one part white we'll see how that looks And this is because I don't want the purple to completely blend in with the background. But we also have to remember, with this piece, Yayo Kasama is talking about obliteration and the obliteration of self and becoming one with her surroundings. So I'm just going to pick up some more red here. It's not quite as red as I'd like it. And some more white. Hasn't done much, but that's enough. 
that will do. And we'll come back with our big one. We're doing the same. The reason we're going to go to the hair is because we're doing exactly the same pattern. We're doing big, medium, small. Big, medium, small. And so what I'm going to do is find the centre of her head. So I might, I'm going to tip this upside down this time. I'm going to find the centre of her head and I'm going to do the first dot down the centre. Then I'm going to go to the the medium size, which was my cotton bud, and I'm going to do that either side. And then to the next smallest. So for this one, I'm going to, before I use the end of my pencil, I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush. Okay, let's have a look. I think they might be the same size. They are the same size. Alright, so I'm going to switch to my pencil because it's easier to use. But what I'm going to do here is, instead of leaving it that, I'm going to do three rows of the small on each side. So it's this, I said before it was exactly the same pattern as our shirt, but I want to um, change it up a bit. Just because it is a dis it's a different part of the body. And from here you can continue down one side of the head or you can work on both at the same time. It's completely up to you. I'm going to continue working down this side. There we go. How did you go with that hair? Did you fall into a pattern or did you find yourself thinking about other things? Alright, we don't have that much more left to go now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some pink dots in the hair. And then we're going to do some lighter orange in the in the face along with our block colors for the eyes and the lips so for here i'm going to mix up one part of each white and red wipe a brush off. And then I'm going to come in with my cotton bud and we're just going to randomly, no, no pattern at all, 
just dotting in like we did for the background. With this one I'm also going to, now that that side's done, grab my pencil again, come in with the white, and I'm going to do some white dots. Just random white dots. To create a bit more drama. So with that pink, we'll just bring in some yellow. more white I'm hoping this will give us a nice flesh tone there we go and I'm going to once again use our cotton ball but the other end this time and the same thing in fact I'm just going to bring in an easel able to do this face. And again, there's no real pattern to this. So you can make up your own. I'm just So on top of this, where we've just made that other orangey pink, I just added some yellow and some white. Um, and this time I'm going to grab my pencil and we're going to do the same thing. Just going to add lots of polka dots. grab my size 2 flat brush going to use some of the red for her lips Grab some white for the whites of her eyes. Back for those, we're going to have to grab an even smaller brush. So I'm going to go in with our size two round, size zero round brush. in with our blue and do the pupils of her eyes. beautiful Yayo Kusama inspired portrait Alright 
guys, I hope you enjoyed um, painting that one with me this week. Um, I apologise that it took you so long to do. If you need to, make sure you do it in a couple of sessions. Um, how did you go? I'd love to hear your feedback. What was it like just doing dots over and over again? Did you fall into a kind of meditation state where you got really relaxed or did it send you a little bit crazy and you just wanted to throw it away i'd love to know we'll see you next week don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when our next video goes live and we'll see you next time bye